Today we are making 3,5-diethoxy carbonyl 2,4-dimethylpyrrol, also known as Norspyrrol, using the Norspyrrol synthesis following the procedure found in Vogel at 1 6th scale. This synthesis requires 16.7 grams of zinc powder, 8.7 grams of sodium nitrite, 75 milliliters of glacial acetic acid, and 32.5 grams of ethyl acetoacetate. The ethyl acetoacetate can be made via the self-condensation of ethyl acetate, and UC-235 has a video on this if you're interested. The ethyl acetoacetate and glacial acetic acid were added to a 250 ml flask and put into an ice bath. The sodium nitrate was then dissolved into 12.5 milliliters of water and added to an addition funnel above the flask. The sodium nitrite solution was slowly dripped into the flask, and this reaction is highly exothermic and must be kept between 5 and 7 degrees Celsius. I added salt into the ice bath to increase the cooling so that the nitrite could be added at a faster rate. Here, half of the ethyl acetoacetate molecules are undergoing nitrosation to form the nitroso group between the two carbonyl groups on the molecule. In a later step, the nitroso group will then be reduced to the amine with the zinc powder. This will then go on to react with another ethyl acetoacetate molecule and condense and cyclize into the pyrrole. After the addition was finished, the reaction was stirred in the ice bath for 30 minutes and then was allowed to sit at room temperature for 4 hours. The addition funnel was switched out for a condenser, and zinc was added to the flask in small portions until the mix began boiling. Another portion of zinc was added once the reaction slowed down a bit.
After all the zinc was added, the mixture was refluxed for one hour. The still hot mixture was quenched in 850 milliliters of water, and the flask was washed out with acetic acid which was also added to the water, and then it was allowed to sit overnight. The crude product was filtered off, washed with water, and dried thoroughly on the pump. It ended up weighing 34.1 grams, which was far above theoretical, so it must be recrystallized from ethanol to clean it up. The product ended up completely solidifying on the first recrystallization attempt, so I tried again and increased the total amount of ethanol used to about 100 milliliters. The product was then filtered, washed with some cold ethanol, and dried on the pump.
13.4 grams of very soft and fluffy crystals were recovered and dried. I left the filtrate in the freezer and recovered an additional 1 gram of product. This brought the total yield up to 48.5%, close to Vogel's 51% after recrystallization. Unfortunately, my melting point tube had broken, so I had to resort to a much more inaccurate method. I measured the melting point at a range of 130 to 140 degrees, with the theoretical being 135. And of course this large range is just likely measuring error because it's a frankly terrible setup, but I do plan on getting a proper melting point apparatus.